let, let's come to your own very interesting book, Apostles of Righteousness in the Marketplace. Uh, why that title? What's this book about? So this book was written, actually, it was partly experiential, right? I've been in the Christian faith for a while. And um, <clears throat> at some stage, I think it was 2010, I had a dream. And in that dream, I believe God actually spoke to me through what I saw in the dream. And I saw a situation where a lot of people who are captains of industry, you know, we went to somewhere and we were asked to take his. And we went and people were bowing to our idols. And I believe that God was saying that a lot of the people, you know, who appear to have made it may have done it the wrong way. And that he would like to see more examples of people who will pursue genuine faith and genuine righteousness and still be prosperous, still achieve mm you know, good success in a way they could hold up their heads. And so I shared a message on that in my local assembly, and I went on to share it also in the Apostles in the Marketplace, which is um, um, a network of Christians and other really, you know, just a values-based network in the marketplace where we encourage each other, iron sharpens iron, you know, to live out, you know, lives, values-based life, you know, lives that are, that are, that are ethical, that uh, demonstrate integrity and that are also successful in whatever we choose to do. Mm. And so um, I was then encouraged to put it, you know, to, to pen it in a book or put it in writing. Mm. And um, like I said, the rest is history. Uh, now, this is, this, this is very fascinating and very relevant um, to the Nigerian society. And, and I'm, I'm curious. People doubt that you can be successful in a Nigerian marketplace without being... To be us, it's a cor I mean, there's a belief that it's a very corrupt society, you know. Therefore, it is impossible. Some will say to be very successful in business without having been involved in something shady at some point in time. But your book is saying no. Yes. You, you don't have to be shady before you're successful in business. That's what the book is saying. And in fact, I'll go even further and say it's an affront on our faith. If you think about it deeply. What he's actually saying is that, you know, God is not true. You know, that you really need to um, sort of cut corners. But what God says is that if you honor me, I will honor you. You know, and I quote some scriptures from the book of Isaiah 59, you know, where it talks about, you know, the reason why at times God does not hear our prayers is because sin gets in the way of the flow of his anointing and his power. My own experience, that's why I say it's experiential, is even more relevant. I believe that you know, if one takes his faith seriously and takes his values seriously, and there are examples, it's not that they are not, they are not, they may not be as loud as the other side, but there are examples of people who have pursued, you know, um, a life of, of of integrity and have been very successful. The foreword of the book was written by Dr. Christopher Collade. He's an icon. People know what mm -hmm. he stands for. You know, and my view is that, like, if one embraces faith, you know, fully, that it is possible not only to succeed ethically but actually to excel you come you you know you come out tops mm. and my own experience and my own sort of um, life i think pretty much demonstrates that mm. i was going to ask you that because i mean if, if there is anybody right in the thick of business in nigeria I, I, you are one of the people i'm going to mention i mean considering the nature of the kind of business that you do what kind of tests and challenges have you had to overcome you know to remain like the title of the book says an apostle in the righteous uh, in, in the market an apostle of righteousness in the marketplace <laughs> you know i think the first thing i want to say because i don't want it to sound like we're dealing with apostles here right okay. so i'm just dealing with people who are and the book says so people who are committed and our principal champions of righteousness. So when you say apostle here, you're not talking I, yeah, about... Yeah, there's an English about, word that says, that means to be a champion, a supporter of a cause. Okay, that's what I mean. That's what and mean. I'm saying yeah. that we need more supporters of the cause of righteousness. That's the first point. The second point is that I believe firmly that if one is genuine about his values, you know, values means what you value, right? And you take a long-term view. The key is to take a long-term view mm -hmm. and to be prepared to delay gratification. It is entirely possible even more likely that in the long term you'll be more sustainably successful than somebody who is cutting corners. You know, this is some, these are time-honored truths, you know, and Nigeria is no different. It's just like people tend to have a short-term mindset here that gets in the way of actually looking at what works. You asked me about tests. I share a couple of tests in the book. One that was uh, my own experience where 
I was involved in a property development where, you know, one came under a lot of pressure because the property prices had come down and one had what looked like a very juicy offer from a multinational. You know, and all was going well until they started asking that we had to pay some kind of um, bribe or some kind of, um, you know, um, give some money that was dubious in order to close that contract. Mm -hmm. And I had to stand by what I believed and I said no. I had to wait and I paid the price. So I don't want to give the impression mm. that it's, it's, it's easy. But I believe that I ended up in a better place, mm. you know, because I got the right tenant, you know, and, and frankly, it's been a very good relationship and it's been going for many years. The point I'm making is that if one would take his or her faith seriously and his or her values seriously and then choose to leave them out, you know, the world will make way for you. Mm. The key is that you must be prepared to delay gratification I also believe that like one has to, if God is real, then we have to invoke his powers, you know, even in our everyday living, through prayer and through honoring him. And I think when people do that, they do get the results. And that's the message we want to come through in this book. Thank you very much, Mr. Niluma. Thank you, Kunle. Great book. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs>